-hmm. think, and I, I think this is a great segue, guys, because one of the issues that we're very, very strong advocates for is Medicare for all. And, and obviously the biggest reason is because we want to alleviate the responsibility this. of things like this. Like, this shouldn't be happening. We that, deal with our unions. healthcare shouldn't be tied to our employment. Exactly. No, no. no. And I and I think and again, I, I want to close with the studio heads. We'll get to that a little later. But I really think that this is one of the reasons why there isn't enough collective bargaining power. The attachment of health care to your livelihood, it, it, it basically makes you bargain against yourself and against your own self-interest and the importance of having that health care. And when you are in a good position financially, that's not a common thing in the acting world. So many people are working actors and they live paycheck to paycheck in a lot of ways. So I'm curious from your perspective, because again, uh, Jolie, I believe you're in California. Uh, Matthew, obviously, I, I believe is in New York. Uh, there are a couple of states right now, New York and California, ironically, that are trying to pass statewide universal health care, which I think would definitely alleviate the problem. But if you guys can talk about, because we wish we were in a place right now, country-wise, where we could have universal health care. You shouldn't have to be negotiating for your health care. But we really think that this is an important issue and building an even bigger movement towards a universal health care system, I think would it, obviously, it would help oh. actors exponentially. It would help love, everybody, yeah. especially anybody who works gig to gig. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to not be stuck at a nine to five and miserable for just getting their health care. We'd but love yeah. to hear your guys' thoughts on that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I am a big proponent of, of your uh, health care is, is, you know, your, your rights and your, and we should keep the world safe and healthy and, and not afraid. And I think that we, we really do quite the opposite in this country. Um, I, but for the moment we are, um, we are tied to that. So I think in terms of this particular election and what's happening in our union, I must fight for the healthcare. Oh world. yes. Yeah. But, I, but I, I, I agree that, you know, that I, I um, I have uh, a, one of my children who does need a, a lot of health care. And I have been navigating the world of um, mental health care. And um, it is really just, um, it has made me like, I want to be a crusader for, for if you are, if you are not working and you have mental health challenges, it is, you're fucked. Sorry. You are. No, I think and even if you are working and even if you have insurance, if you have mental health challenges, you're still fucked. And, that you know, because even people with insurance are underinsured and mental health is never treated the way that it should be treated never. Um, in our system. Never. never. I mean, when my and uh, when my mom lost her health care, she's 83 years old. She's an icon. And yeah. she, she was like, Jolie, what do I do? They're saying to go to this concierge service and they told and there's a 38 page glossy booklet printed ready to go when they said oh they had no idea the healthcare plan was falling apart and they sent out this thing and that says how to navigate this benefit i don't even care about saying the name uh and and then they want you my 83 year old mother to go online which already we're done right and, you're it's already a problem right and say does she need more of her prescriptions does she need her eye stuff does she need hearing aids does she like you have to really sort of um design your plan which which our our gold standard health care was like you were like oh my god i'm so happy that i made my sag health care you could do a guest star spot on something and make this health care and they and it was and you were taken care of and now that i am doing this deep dive it is it, it's uh, we need we need to fix it we need to fix you know, it. I want, I want you guys to, you know, I don't know if it's crystal clear that that secondary, that senior secondary health coverage wasn't for every person who turned 65. That senior secondary health plan had to be earned. You needed to get 20 retiree health credits. Oh, no, okay, that's over a career. In order to earn that, those retiree health credits were what you got for a pension credit. So if you earned a pension credit, pretty much that was your retiree health credit. So this wasn't something that was just given to anybody. These people earned it. They paid for it. And like Jolie said, Shirley Jones with Oklahoma Carousel, The Music Man, none of those movies does she see a nickel in residuals because she gave at the office. Those people pre-60 uh, traded those that residual uh, proposal that they had to have those residuals 
for $2.25 million in 1960 for the studios to start a pension and health plan. So to, t to take Shirley Jones Health Insurance and Connie's, that senior secondary, not primary, senior secondary, was really deplorable. And then the union puts up a video in December from an actor who says nobody lost their health care. And by the way, no one was ever promised senior secondary health coverage. Well, with that kind of thinking, none of us are promised anything because the plan says in fine print, they can change the benefit at any time they wish. So they could tell everyone with the initials, Jolie Fisher, she doesn't have health insurance. And Jolie, they, and if Jolie went out and said, wait a second, I earned my health insurance, I had it. And then have the, have the union itself put up a video and say, sorry, Jolie, you were never really promised health insurance. To tell Shirley Jones and Connie Stevens that they were never really promised that secondary health insurance that people worked decades to get is a betrayal beyond betrayal. The other thing is I have two kids. I have my stepsons, but you know, I'm their mom. I've been their mom for 25 years, but they are over 26. So when they left my, the, you know, the womb here, they yeah. had to find healthcare. I mean, it is wild. And now they both are married and have children. I'm glamma. And, um, you know, they're having children in this climate and they are, uh, you know, and, and I agree. I think we need to be fighting for this next generation uh, to be able to, I mean, it's like, we're talking about being able to afford. It's like, it should be your right. It That's be, the thing. Yeah. We should be taking care of, I mean, look at it, it works in other countries. Everywhere else, but here really, actually, we're the only developed nation that does not have some form of universal health care, And it's we ridiculous. also, we also have the worst health outcomes and we also have the highest health costs. Um, and so to think that those things are not related to not having universal health care is absurd. And on top of everything else, when you think about the stress that's involved, when you're a maid actor, that's one thing, but the stress for like 95% of the people in the profession is bad enough. Let's add, let's add health care worries on top well, of that because it just isn't and enough. And then what about with. the fact that you're talking about an industry that probably has a decent amount of mental health and addiction problems? Um, like a lot of things do. And, you know, like I say, like when it's firefighters, they have their health concerns, like different industries have certain issues that they're more prone to based on the kind of people that go into those, but also just based on the environment. And to not address that is, is just yeah, my, ridiculous. My and, cousins and, we have, and we have, um, you know, stunt performers and dancers who they're, uh, you know, all of us the same, but particularly those people that put their lives on the line and their physical bodies on the line um, and their careers are, you know, their the life of their career is less than most people. You know, you can't throw yourself right. on a building, you know, well into your yeah, senior and, years. And you know, the, the whole thing about, you know, not having that universal health care, you know, it's really hitting someone when they're down because it's going to be those when it's based on your on your employment and your earnings. You're, you're getting a double hit because you're saying, God, I can't find work and I'm having a hard time. And by the way, I've lost my health care. Imagine the actor last year getting into, you know, June, July, and they made their thirteen or $14,000 and they thought, I made it. I'm in for the rest of the year. To then get a notice on August 12th that, no, you didn't make it. That $13,000 that got you in, you now have to go find another thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 when there's no work in the middle of a pandemic when the industry is shut down. It was the goofiest thing of all time on every single level. What they did, they still had four years of reserves left. They said in their webinars that they had money to keep the current funding, the current benefit levels until 2024. Well, if you had enough I mean, money I, to I think it's sort, of, it, it, it's sort of interesting, uh, not interesting, that's not the right word, but they are, uh, they are really leaning on that it was the fault of the pandemic. You know, they are, they're saying, I mean, I don't believe this is true. They were like, it was a convenience, you know, that the pandemic happened. Obviously we were all devastated and lived through these extraordinary times. And if you lost people, my heart is fractured for you. But I, in, in terms of the way that they said, you know, listen, the trustees made this, this uh, terrible, difficult decision and in the middle of the pandemic that it wouldn't have survived. They knew they knew for years that it wasn't going to survive, but it did make it a whole lot harder for it. You know, when when we had a work stoppage for everybody in the world, basically, 
to, um, you know, the timing was more than inconvenient. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.